Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations. Previously, we thoroughly investigated the hallway outside the office and discovered some pretty incriminating evidence. It seems that Portsman had his um, basketball hoop, which he keeps in the hallway outside of his office, moved. And he also swapped the numbers on the panels on the door. And by those two methods, he was able to fool Maggie Bird into opening Edgeworth's office by pretending it was his own. So... Then we took the fight to him and tried to lay on the evidence, but he's countering with one argument here. Which, we need to get going and hear him out, and see how we can refute this. So let's go. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's a perfect alibi. Oh. Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like. You'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Uh, sir, yes sir. I'll go check out this alibi, sir. Be right back. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. The guys down in Criminal Affairs said they saw him at around 2 a.m. Does no one sleep in this city? You see... All of the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. Let's press everything. I suspect we'll have to use the key and talk about when exactly the key was missing. Though the exact time it was missing isn't present here in the information. I think that's over in the logic menu, but we can't access the logic menu from here. Anyway. You are correct. It was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was too. Oh, giving testimony like a pro! Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. Hold it. it is as you say, however... Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Objection. Oh, come on now. I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Hold it. So you paid the criminal affairs department to visit. Yup, right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's a perfect alibi. Hmm. Well, we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Yes, sir. A number of detectives said that they saw you at around that time. See? I have the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ugh. Impossible. He actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why the sudden, sullen look on your face? Can't you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the line. It's time to get off this crazy train. 
Uh, you there. Uh, sir. Please escort the young lady out. But remember, be gentle. M Maggie! Detective Gumshoe! Oof. Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. If I only had a clue, did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? The intruder I met could not have been Portsman, then who could it have been? I need to calmly think this through one more time and with logic. Nice, okay. The culprit rearranged my files twice, once before and once after the murder. Why? Other than the victim's gun that I found, could there be another gun in play here? Yeah, so... We know for sure that Buddy Faith was shot with, um... With the gun that was found. But someone else had another gun and shot um, the, the wall hanging. What, what, what do you call a portrait that's used for hanging a coat? Is, what, 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 what even is the word for that? The intruder I met could not have been Portsman. Who could it have been? It could have been someone with access to an identical revolver. I think that's the only connection I can make here. There were two bullets left at the scene of the crime. One that robbed Mr. Faith of his life. And one that nearly robbed me of my jacket. However, the murder weapon only shows signs of being fired once. Meaning that it is entirely possible that a second gun was used in my office tonight. But, seeing as how the killer had to steal Mr. Faith's gun, I doubt the killer had another gun up their sleeve. Therefore... The second gun could have been the property of an entirely different person. Which could mean that there was another person who paid a visit to my office tonight. Okay, but literally who? Ah... The files were rearranged twice because two different people rifled through them. Oh, that's clever. Supposing there was yet another visitor tonight, that would also resolve the issue of why my shelves were upended twice. We know that the shelves were disturbed once before and once after the murder. So it shouldn't be much of a stretch to think that it was the work of two different people. Once by the person who stole the victim's gun and then killed him with it. And once again after the murder by our second culprit. Who was the owner of the second gun. If we suppose that the second culprit's gun was the one that was pointed at my back. Objection! Mr. Portsman. It seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great! So you finally come to your senses! Mr. Edgeworth! Sir, what are you saying? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person I ran into was the killer, but, I may, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? I suppose all of that was internal dialogue then, because no one else heard what he was saying. The person I ran into was just your average thief. Uh, the thief? But, sir, doesn't that cause some sort of contradiction in the facts? 
Not at all. It simply means that the killer was someone else. And it means that in actuality, two culprits stole into my office tonight. What do you mean, two? It explains both why my shells were disturbed twice and how there were two guns. Mr. Portsman tricked Miss Bird and gained entry into my office. Objection. Now you're just leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. If you could please go along with my hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portsman. In the end, if you really are innocent, you should have nothing to worry about. <sighs> now then. Returning to my scenario, Mr. Portsman was the one to steal something from me. Which is why he checked secret safe and ransacked my shelves. This is the first time. So then, this would be when the files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else. Who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith? But... Why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? He probably had business with Mr. Portsman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when he noticed sounds coming from my office, and my office would be my guess. Also, at that time, wouldn't Buddy also be fooled by the number on the door and the and the hoop? Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? And he must have thought it was odd, so we came to this office to check it out. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portsman, Mr. Faith probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portsman was not as merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. Didn't Edra say that if Portsman is innocent, he'll have nothing to worry about here? This was the moment in which the first shot was fired at the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portsman wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that because he had also left the fake dying message behind. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, then all would be solved. However, there was yet another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets complicated. There was... another? Visitor, sir? Yes, and this other person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. Portsman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new visitor had no way of knowing that, and so... They stole the master key from the security guard's room. And then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seems the thief found their prize. The stolen Zero file, right, sir? Correct. Only, just as the thief was about to leave with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. So the shelves getting messed up twice and the two bullets. It was all because two different people were doing those things at two different times. Precisely. So, now do you see, Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief, and was not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's visit. <laughs> What's so funny, pal? Absolutely splendid! Your scenario explains everything. 
Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth, after all. But you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right. It would indeed render my alibi, which has which has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument, for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Ugh. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't let me get away with that, sir. But he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I, I don't believe this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. You know something? I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? Uh, that is... If your theory is correct. Portsman Alibi Part 2. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. That thief you ran into should be a real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down to criminal affairs. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. So you think we should be out there looking for the thief? Of course! Now isn't the time to be wasting time on dead-end discussions. I don't think it's at all dead-ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? Hmm... I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. If we press him... Yeah, he's starting to sweat and freak out a little. If we press him... He might slip up and say something critical. That thief you ran into should be a real suspect, wouldn't you say? Actually, no, I wouldn't. Why not? That's elementary. The dying message, of course. Mr. Faith's killer was very clearly left those letters on the spines of those files. And it was after they were out on there that the thief stole one of them. You mean the zero files, right? And that's how we also know the letters themselves were a setup, and not from Mr. Faith. If the thief was the killer, do you think they would try to undermine themselves? Uh, maybe the killer just didn't think of that either. Yes, that must be it. Maybe, just maybe. We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. Hold it. Once escaped, I highly doubt a thief would linger nearby. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't get what they were really after. Oh? You talk like you know quite a bit about this thief. <laughs> it's nothing like that. I have no idea about anything, after all. I hate to repeat myself, but as I already said, I was training in my room. But according to Mr. Faith's note... Hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Didn't we say that Jim left that note for me in the early evening? If you have proof that he left it at a different time, say, just before he was murdered... I don't have any, no. You see? So I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down in criminal affairs. Why didn't you go there with Jim, Mr. Faith? 
Uh, that's because he said he was too tired and he was going to take a quick nap. You know those sofas in the hallway. He likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. Not again. And what are the evidence he brought? They were things related to yesterday's case. Just two items, a gun and a pendant. Interesting. This piece of testimony seems too crucial to let slip through the cracks. He brought me two items, a gun and a pendant that were related to yesterday's case. Hmm. Could this gun... ...be what the thief used? A gun and a pendant. Yes, this gun, which was the murder weapon. Ah. And this pendant, which belonged to the victim. Horsey. And why were you taking them to criminal affairs? There was something in a pa uh, past case file I wanted to compare those two to. But all this has nothing to do with this case right now. Anyway, I believe you'll find the lawn paper trail I left to be at your satisfaction. Hmm. This is all matching up with what Detective Gumshoe found out. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. I can't expect you to know, can I? Nope. But I guess you can expect me to take a guess based on logical deductions. Oh? Then let's see you deduce. Jim waited for me to leave and then stole the master key. For the purpose of sneaking into your room, of course. And that's when Miss Bird caught him red-handed and the murder occurred. It's all exactly as I had laid out earlier. I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Okay. As is the case in the franchise's past, when something gets a, a new gets added to the testimony, that's the critical bit you need to focus on. Okay. When Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at Criminal Affairs. He brought me two items, a gun and a pendant, that are related to yesterday's case. Now what did his note actually say? I brought the three pieces of evidence by. Well, 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 well. That is a contradiction. Only two pieces. I believe the proper phrase here is, you fail. What? I excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Portsman, as you intend to keep evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I, I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's a piece I think you should read. Carefully. It says that Mr. Faith was bringing three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. He... I can't believe to get tripped up by simple arithmetic. Where is the missing piece of evidence? I... It's... You have it, don't you? God, I can't take this music seriously because there is just the best and greatest video in the world that uses this song. It's Miles Edgeworth, a 3D model of him, probably ripped from like a 3DS game maybe. Um, I mean, it's fan-made, I don't know. But it's a 3D model of Edgeworth dancing to this music while text is overlaid saying, um, didn't you know? I have an updated autop autopsy report. <laughs> it's... God, that video gives me life. Oh my god. Anyway. You have it, don't you? 
Only the guilty would make such a face. Detective Gumshoe. You don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. Well, don't come any closer. I'm warning you. This is all part of the investigation, pal, so don't even think about stopping me. No! Hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir. A videotape? Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. But why would he hide something like that? <laughs> There's only one reason why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because it would unequivocally point to that person himself as the real killer. <laughs> Let's examine this videotape in a little more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. The text on it. KG8. Okay, well that's not exactly DL6, but... KG8? This... must be from inside the file. That's a police number, sir. Does that mean this video was evidence from that case? Interesting. However, what's recorded on this isn't what's important right now. Let's give the casing a thorough once over. Oh, there's something else. It's been partially watched. Thank God I'm old enough to remember how VCR tapes work. <laughs> A blood stain. Oh, that's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean this might be Detective Faith's blood? <laughs> no, no, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> no amount of denial can save you. We have but to run the blood test to find the truth. You told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious. Was it at the moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that. Not even if we were to examine this tape for fingerprints. Nyag! If I had to take a guess, I'd say that the only ones on here would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No, impossible! I. 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 Did he just eat his metal? <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun going out the other way. Um... Oh my. Mr. Portsman has been placed under arrest for the murder of Detective, Detective Buddy Faith, sir. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab techs on the tur- on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. The blood work came back and it was definitely Mr. Faith's blood on there. And as a bonus, they were also able to lift a few of Mr. Faith's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool detection skills outside the courtroom. I'm impressed beyond words, sir. It was nothing. I'm just sorry you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please accept my apologies. Aw, it was nothing, really. Compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky that it was only a burglary and a murder this time, sir. Only a... Well, if it had been a hold-up or a hostage situation, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. 
I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person. Yeah, goals. Something tells me we should have hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir? That Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor. And why would you say he was corrupt? Well, I heard that there were a number of suspicious things related to his court cases. There was even rumors about how some of the evidence he uses is forged, sir. Forged evidence, huh? <laughs> God, coming off of Apollo Justice, I've had enough of forged evidence. And they say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Ooh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession. We never did get around to asking what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah, whenever we got near that topic, he just clammed up. Although, we can be pretty certain that it was to steal something. This is just between you and me, sir, but... There's a rumor that some sort of huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh? Oh, well, well. With Mr. Portsman not willing to divulge anything, it certainly lends credence to that rumor. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? Then Mr. Portsman isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather that there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. Okay, I think I know what they're setting up here, and that's friggin' amazing. An overarching villain, or group of villains, that are scheming about something from the get-go. Oh man, that's good. For example... We still haven't figured out what the significance to this piece of evidence. Yeah, why was the stolen Zero Series file stolen in the first place? Take that. The person who stole this file, the other villain of the night. Yeah, I wonder who it was. And what happened to the stolen pages? I wonder. Who in the world was it that held me up at gunpoint? Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Yes? I came across this while I was processing your office earlier, sir. This card. A pair of... wings? What is it, sir? Is that a bird or something on there? I can't exactly tell what it's supposed to be. It's like a... Some sort of... Ball with three spikes or legs and... Tentacles or... And two wings. And the sides have... What look like bird footprints. Okay, so... This calling card was left by some bird villain. Okay. <laughs> it's not just any bird. Oh... Miles knows. It is the mark of the raven. A three-legged raven. Even you should know what that is, detective. Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? That great thief everyone's talking about? Mm. I like this. Yes, it is the mark of the great thief, Yatagarasu. Wow, that is... That is d distinctly Japanifornia, or... Uh, yeah, it, wow, that is... That is actually Japanese as hell. Good show. Under the mark of a legendary bird, the Yatagarasu is noble to the end. A modern Robin Hood. I know Karasu is crow? But what is... The other part. Hmm. Whoa! Look at that silhouette! Yatagarasu haunts embassy. The noble Yatagarasu, vigilante of the business world, reappears. 
Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appears and vanishes at will. Though we don't know much about the thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yatagarasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. I like this guy. Man, I friggin' love gentlemen thieves. Also, speaking of gentlemen thieves, um... God, there's this great book series called The, the Gentleman Bastards. It's about a whole group of gentlemen thieves doing gentlemen thieve things. And my god, it's fr freaking best. Oh my god, I love those books. Anyway, um... Yeah, wow. The theft is always performed in silence and always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found is sent out to the mass media. Along with the single card. And you know what was stolen? Files left behind by Manfred von Karma, who was corrupt to the bone. Oh, this is interesting. Although, it has been a while since the Yata Garasu's last appearance. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, look, something's written on the back. What? Let me see. It's the location of where the thief put the stolen files. So the person who stole the contents of the file was the Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu. Organization. Quite a few key words are popping up in this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief, Yatagarasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see these events coming. For they were he uh, heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna have some fun with this game. The end. Oh yeah, first case done. Turnabout Airlines. Did I read that right? <laughs> oh man, okay, so... I wonder how many cases this game is going to have. Like, I... I want to say maybe more than four, but I'm not sure. Maybe five. I feel like five would feel right for this game, with like... The change of formula, like there's probably not going to be any court cases, so... Uh, court sessions, rather. If it's all investigation and interrogation like that, then yeah, maybe five would feel right. Well, we have time to kill, so yeah, let's start Turnabout Airlines. Murder at an airport? The murder that occurred in my office. The return of the great thief, Yatagarasu. Thinking back, everything began on that fateful day, two days ago. Two days earlier? Hey, what? Oh, spilled wine. Okay, maybe not airport, but airplane. Oh wait, I, I, I didn't I didn't read that. Thank you for flying iFly Airlines. We are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. We are asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. The hell kind of airplane has an as elevator?
Oh my god. Look at this ridiculous plane. This is a, this is not a commercial flight. My god. Okay, so um spilled wine near Edgeworth. And I think that must be blood on the right. Oh god. Is that a piano? Oh. And Why do I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare? 6.13, huh? Guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. Huh. Slight turbulence indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. For your safety, we ask that you return to your seats. And fasten your seatbelts. I suppose turbulence is to ex be expected on a flight. Although admittedly, I am less than comfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Damn. That cut deep. I almost forgot he had a fear of earthquakes. Wow. Mm -hmm. What's this? A travel wallet, but it's not mine. How did someone else's travel wallet wind up in my pocket? Ah, my head. Why won't this headache go away? He was hit in the head by something. I'll take care of this travel wallet later, or hand it off to an attendant. Ah, from earthquake-like turbulence to an elevator. Poor Edgeworth, this is just not his day, is it? What am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, I know full well why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a young child. Game Boy Art. I was caught up in a murder that happened in an elevator. But how long am I going to get? let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. I'm rooting for you, Edgeworth. What? What the? What in the world happened? Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. He's dead! Please, calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? You murderer! What? No! You have it all wrong. It wasn't me. Oh my god. Oh wow, okay, this is, this is a lot, and I love it. <laughs> okay, so we got someone with, with so many goddamn bottles. Like, Jesus Christ, that man is currently dying of alcohol poisoning. Then, um... Over to the right, we have someone who's a huge worry wart with a parachute, a life ring, and a breathing mask all ready to go. Then down at below, we have a regular, um... God, who's that really, really fat kid from Willy Wonka? Who, like, fell in the lake of chocolate? Got sucked out the pipe? Augustus? Augustus Gloop? Yeah, we got a regular candy lover, I think. Is that a game console tool? Uh, 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 game console 2? Hey everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your flight attendants today, Rhoda to Nero. Road to... 
there. Um, road to Arrow? Rota to Nero. Rota to Nairo. Rota. Uh, whatever. You're Rota now. Unfortunately, you have just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse and it was a murder. What? Mur murder? What's going on with this flight? Everyone, please calm down. There is no reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. But, but someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me off! Please, there is no need to feel threatened. We have already apprehended the culprit. Address in cuffs. I ask that everyone please remain calm. What the heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecutor, and I assure you I am not the killer. Ha! <laughs> Being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, buddy. Yeah, that's... That's really, really true. Now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. So you say, however... I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back me up. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities to at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in, your cust in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine, the direction it's going in. I'm not about to just sit idle, idly by, while I get accused of murder. Miss Tenero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance? To do what? A chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you mean by, meant by incriminating evidence just now. To accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give a proper defense. Can the professional flight attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? You have a point. Very well, I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make it quick. Of course, as you wish. Good. Very well then, let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. Dang, straight into testimony. Okay. First off, let's actually look at the organizer. What do we have? The badge, of course. Travel wallet discovered in the lounge. Picked up off the floor in front of the elevator. It isn't mine, so whose is it? Partially covered in blood, too. Or wine. Crime scene notes. Body found at 6.15 a.m. and said the elevator stopped at the first floor lounge. Hmm... Looks like a statue with blood on the corner. A bunch of spilled money. Card. Two cards, maybe. And what is that around his neck? Some yellow cord?
and Sky Magazine. Details meals, movies, and other services inside. Oh. Okay. Um. So meals at one, two, and three. At eight, nine, and wait. That's hard to judge. Is that eight or seven? Well, movies are only till uh, from seven to eight or six to eight. Yeah, I think that's six to eight. Okay, wait. Yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to fit in just yet, but okay. Wait, so at six... What what was going on at six? Um, drinks. Well, Edgeworth was in a bar downstairs, so that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. No, that's five to six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be there. Okay. And for profiles, we have Unknown. Was seated in first class like myself, but I don't know his name. And then Rhoda. Okay. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. So, if you would please cooperate, we will turn you we'll turn you over just as soon as we land. That's it? That's her evidence? I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wow. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. Um, let's save this for next time, I think. God, I... I love murder mysteries that are like set in a bottle. And by that, by that I mean there are a whole bunch of people in a trapped enclosed environment with no method of escape or exit. Like, like we're talking stuff like Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, that book and, the, okay, if you've read that book, or seen any adaptations of it. You know how satisfying that sort of story can be. Love the ending. Um, this is an airplane. So many hundreds of miles above the ground. Uh, like... <laughs> the potential is... So good. And speaking of potential, the things this game just set up, this Yadagarasu character, oh, that's surely gonna be the final boss, most tricky thing to prove. For like the final case, and how this person is digging up corruption, probably related to Von Karma. Oh man, wow. I, I, it's just. I already see where this game is going, and it's so strong. I love it. I can't wait to see what happens next. I just... Oh, man. Just stick the landing, okay? Just... Ace Attorney Investigations 1, stick the landing. I'm telling you, game. Just... You have the strongest start. Don't fumble the ball. Don't do it, please. I'm begging you. Oh, man. So I wonder if here, for this case, 
if Miles was framed in some way, or if him being knocked out was a fly, um, not really a fly, but a just an occurrence of the moment, random happenstance, like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and maybe when the real murderer got off the elevator, they conked Edgeworth on the head as he fled. I can't wait to explore this airplane and see the other passengers. I can tell there's going to be some goofy people here. I also have to wonder, uh, Gumshoe clearly isn't here, so is Edgeworth going to be alone for this? But, I don't know, the game kind of set up this whole buddy system with someone to talk to as you investigated. Maybe Tenero here will help Edgeworth? Once we convince her that he's not the killer, which is going to be really easy, we just have to say, please explain how a passport can murder someone. I'm sure Agent 47 could do it, but not a regular prosecutor dude. I just have the widest grin on my face. This is just a joy. Anyway. Huh. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been Ace Attorney Investigations. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time when we get into some real fun. So until then, please take care.